Hi everyone, welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. Welcome to the Knit and Turn Pike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm very happy that you're here with me today. Today we're going to be doing a project update. If you guys have been following me for the last few weeks, you, got, you guys know that I have been knitting the Rami Hill Mystery Shawl Knit Along for 2022 called Time Heals. Um, a mystery knit along is where you get a little bit of the pattern every week and you knit that clue up and then you have to wait until the next time point um, for the next clue. Now this was a, a series of five clues. Um, this is going to be an update for the fourth clue. So we will be getting the fifth clue this coming Friday. I believe that is the 20th. Yep, the 20th of May. That will be the last clue. Um, I am knitting two shawls. I have three people in, in this group that are knitting this along with me. There might be others that haven't shared with me, but these people have um, allowed me to share their projects here as well. So you can guys can get a feel for what this project might look like in different yarns. Uh, different types of yarn and um, let's just go ahead and get into it if you want to see the other uh, three clues I will link all of those videos down in the description box below and you can see how it progresses progresses and also each time we had a new clue if there were new stitches introduced I did a, a short tutorial after each one of those videos now for this week, there are no new clue, I'm sorry, there are no new stitches being introduced. So there's not going to be any stitch tutorial this week for this shawl. But there might be next week, you never know. Um, but I do have a couple of tips that I want to share with you if you are knitting this shawl, or maybe it might apply to something that you're currently working on for your knitting or crochet project. So I hope they'll be helpful. And I hope you, you'll stick with me. All right, so let's just get into it. This is clue four. Now, if you do not want to see this, you might want to not watch this video because I'm about to show clue four of the Rami Hill Mr. Shaw Knit Along Time Heals. Um, one second. I think I mentioned this before. Every week she likes to give um, a little bit of a poem at the start of the uh, shawl. There, last week we did not have a new poem introduction, but this week we do. Um, let me just read all of these. It's, there's, so there's only three, that, even though we're on clue four. It says, a moment passes and then another, a row added to a row. At once, pieces break and others heal. And it says, our wounds healed anew, strengthen, growing. So that is... What she uses as in a little poem, she likes to use these little points for inspiration and the naming of her shawl and in the design of her shawl. And that's what we have so far. Um, again, I believe this is going to be called Time Heals. She, this is her 10th annual, uh, so she made it a little bit more special, had the name already done, and she picked a special shape for this shawl instead of how she alternates back and forth between triangular and circular every year. All right, so let's get into it. Here is my, what I'm doing two shawls. Now, one of the shawls is made with a verb for keeping warm. This is a kit that was uh, sold by a verb for keeping warm and was put together uh, with uh, help from Rami Hill herself. And she also uh, made a shawl pin and included that in the kit. And you also got this other little project bag. But the, this is the yarn. I'm using the Rumor Yarn Base, which is a merino silk blend. And uh, I believe it's 70% merino, 30% silk. There were two other yarn bases. One had a cashmere, the other one had alpaca in it. So they're very luxurious type of yarns that she picked for her shawl. Now this is where we are. This is um, clues through clue four. You can see how big it's getting. I'm trying to hold it back so you can see how big it's getting. The rows are, are like over 500 stitches long. And you can see uh, clues one through three were well, the clues one and two were in the first color, which is this lighter color called Pan Dulce. And then clues, clue three introduced this second color. And now clue four, we, we mentioned last week in clue three that we're, we're done with clue one, I mean color one. So now we're just solely working with color two. And this is what it is looking like. There's, I will say this, 
we went from there when we were in clue three we broke it up into sections of eight stitches and uh, that's how the chart was presented um, which is really easy to manage eight stitches you do the same thing over and over again uh, with this was this was right where you were starting here these little there's 49 of these little sections so now we're back to uh, seven sections like we were at the very beginning and each one of these sections goes okay one section goes from here here's the next stitch marker the next section goes from here to here they're pretty long there's this like almost 60 70 stitches in each one of these little sections and I will say if you can look at the the knitting it's a lot of little yarn overs there's a lot of stitches to manage um, I will say that you know I want to just share this little tip that you can do like if this gets to be too much sometimes you have to do the same thing over and over are you on the second part of that are you on the third part of that you can easily take your chart and just take a pen and draw a line down it and at that mark put a stitch marker something that's different like I'm using these stitch markers here maybe try a different kind of a stitch marker like maybe these beaded ones will be where you're going to be putting those markers and just mark those in the middle in, in the middle or wherever it's appropriate for you and it helps you when you get to that point you realize you're supposed to be at that point instead of having to undo 70 something stitches if maybe you messed up one little section it's just a little tip I like to do when the sec when the when the chart gets to be kind of long as the repeats are kind of long for this just break it up into manageable chunks take a red that's what I do I take a pink pen or red pen draw a line and I say that's where I'm going to put my stitch marker I did this when I knitted the Japanese sampler shawl last year from Tony L. Lorenz helped me tremendously at every now every month when I got my chart I had to find that point and draw a line but it kept me on track and I made less mistakes so that's one of the tips I have for this shawl and I'll just kind of show you the design um there is a point here where you have all these little diamonds looks like little leaves and then this is another then there's the point in the middle where you can look you can see here looks like it's the start of another leaf another big leaf and then these little diamond sections start of another leaf so that's kind of what where we're going with this you can kind of see what this looks like I'll kind of go slow and you can see there's a ton of leaves in this design And that's where we are and we have one more clue all right so this is where my other shawl it looks the same looks exactly the same um, but this is made with Amanda Hope yarn this is her Aussie uh, extra fine merino wool and I'm using you had me at Grello and steel this is a kit that she sold um, I, I will link a fur for keeping warm and Amanda Hope down in the description box below this is what this shawl is looking like you can see the two colors how big it's getting and I'll get up close and show you so you can see and then here's where you haven't seen my clues for this you can see here's the little diamonds well there that's the big leaf part and then on each side of the little diamonds the little leaves and that marker right there was where clue three ended and so clue four really wasn't that long it you know it's not long this way it's long this way because like I said the rows are over 500 stitches long so it's quite a bit of knitting still but it's doesn't look like you did much because you only did it you only knit it you know that much a couple of inches but it's you know a lot of stitches back and forth and that's what it looks like and the only other tip I want to share with you guys is a clip that I did I was thought about sharing this as a short but I decided just to share it as a clip and this this is definitely appropriate for this shawl it's appropriate for any type of knitting it's just asking you to guys when you are knitting to think about your knitting to look at your knitting to evaluate what it is what it's looking like and um, maybe try something different so let me answer that clip I want to show you something so this next stitch I have to knit is a yarn over if you um, if you just go into this stitch I just want to give you something to think about if you go into this stitch regularly and knit it look at this you can see how the bottom of that stitch 
you can see it and for some designs it's totally fine that's what it will end up looking like if you just knit the knit, knit it and you know that maybe that's good for your design but just look at it this way if you twist the stitch instead of knitting it through the front like we just did if you knit it through the back loop it will twist the stitch and look at that look how much neater that is and how much better that is it defines the yarn over tidies it up makes it look a lot neater so think about that there's no that's not a right or wrong you can twist the stitch and knit through the front or knit through the back you're just twisting the stitch but um looks a lot neater something to think about i hope you enjoyed that tip um you know just again evaluate your knitting if you don't like the way a, a knit stitch looks knit it through the back loop maybe it might look a little bit better with your design all right so those are the tips i have uh the, the last thing i want to talk about is the, the updates that i have from the people who are knitting this along with me i have three people and i you can go check out some of their earlier clues and some of the other really videos um, Vanessa Tigger girl I don't have an update for her she's been having to work on a lot of other things um, I will show what she, what I have for her last she's using Arkansas yarn company yarn my, and my first love is her color one and Malabrigo yarn sock yarn in light of love as her second color I'm looking forward to seeing that second color of hers and then we have Donna Holmes is knitting this with us this is her clue to update Gorgeous. She's, the yarn she's using is amazing. It is from All Dyed Up Fibers, um, and this is her her yarn that you see here is her color one, and this is the Galaxy colorway in the MCN yarn, which is 70% merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. And then the dark blue is, is a Twinkle Toes. That's going to be her second color, and I can't wait to see that in her Clue 3 that's going to be coming up next. It'll be in, and that is a 75% merino 20% nylon, 5% Stellina. Um, thank you, Donna, for sharing that with us. And um, it's beautiful, just gorgeous. And then Joyce Swenson, is, who is yarn motivated in uh, Ravelry, she is, um, and I believe also here on YouTube, she is uh, sharing with us today Clue 3. And look at this, this is gorgeous as well. She's using fiber optics yarn, cashmere yarn. Uh, she's using a Sunrise, which is a unified cashmere gradient for her color one. So she has a gradient going through the shawl for her color one. And then she's using the color Darkest Hour. That's going to be her color two, which will finish that shawl in a dark edge. So she's got a gradient going here, and then she's going to finish it up with a dark edge and with that great, that dark color that the gradient ends in. What a great, great idea to do that. And I just love the way it's looking. It's just really, really beautiful. And uh, just a smart idea to do it that way. And thank you, Joyce, for sharing that. Thank you to Joyce, uh, Donna, and Vanessa for sharing your products with us and inspiring us to uh, try something different, try different yarns, and um, to uh, try new projects. Special surprise we for you, for those of you who have watched my video all the way through, I'm going to give you today as a... Special thank you. If you guys want to participate in this giveaway, please make a comment below. Remember that you must be 18 years old to enter and you um, uh, must check out the rules below, please. Uh, that's, I must encourage you to do that. If you do live in a country where I cannot ship to you, I will be have to give, I will end up having to giving you a gift certificate, a monetary gift certificate. There are some countries, I recently had a country I was having some trouble shipping to, so um, uh, the USPS website has all of that listed. I'll link down that. I'll link that page down in the description box below, so you can check that out as well. Today, I'm going to be giving away four skeins of yarn, and I'm giving away four. Two is enough for a pair of socks, but we are talking about shawls, and so I'm going to give away four skeins of yarn. And this yarn is just really vibrant. I think it'd be really like really pretty to use in like a, maybe a garter stitch type of shawl or a stockinette type of shawl, where all these colors could really sing um and just be really really beautiful this is from hobie this is called happy toes it is a 75 percent super wash merino wool it's not wool i mean it is wool but it's super wash wool and it's 25 percent polyamide it's really soft and springy and this color is um uh, uh i don't know hold on color four and 
uh, there's 218 yards in each one of these uh, skeins. So you could do two pairs of socks, or you can do a nice big shawl, like 800 yards. So that's what's going to be the prize. And if you would like to enter this down below, um, please put the word um, joy. I've got joy on my shirt, J-O-Y, J-O-Y. Put that down in, in a comment below this video, and I will pick a winner. I'll put a date over my face. Um, I'll pick a winner um, pretty soon. I think that's all I have for today. This is a kind of a short clue, short update. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Please take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you all very, very soon.